An archer releases an arrow towards a target at a velocity of 65 and an angle of 4.3 above the horizontal. Where's my angle? Okay, there it is. So when released, the tip of the arrow is a horizontal distance 70 meters from here. Pew! Fly all the way to that side. And 1.6 above the ground. The arrow hits the center of the target. So assume that air resistance is negligible. Very nice. Don't need to worry about drag force and all those other things. Okay, and all the mass of the arrow is at its tip. So although our arrow is a nice long object, we're going to assume it's just a point mass. Show that the time taken for the arrow to reach the target is 1.08 seconds. We, we, when we see this kinematics kind of question where object is moving, my recommendation is you set up your stuva information. See what is your, what information do we have? Yeah, so I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at the horizontal component of things. Okay, so S-T-U-V-A, stuva. Say it with me, stuva. Okay, horizontal distance. Your, this arrow is going to travel. A distance of 70 meters. So I'm going to put there 70. Time, I, I need to show, I need to show that it's 1.08. Initial speed, okay. Mm, that one I can find. Because, because of the initial speed and the angle that they gave me. Mm. So, let's draw a little triangle here. Uh, we want to find this horizontal component of velocity so you're gonna launch it at 65 meters per second at an angle 4.3 degrees so your horizontal velocity is this ux over there which is adjacent hypotenuse cosine so we go 65 cos 4.3 Velocity? I don't know. I don't know. Okay. Acceleration? Horizontal? I don't have. Uh, zero. Okay. So, looks like we have enough information to use a stuva for the horizontal. S equals to ut plus half at squared. But since it's horizontal, I might as well indicate this. S of x, u of x, acceleration of x. So, we travel 70 meters at a speed of... 65 cos 4.3 and time acceleration at the back don't have we just plus zero but you don't need to write it out so just this is fine okay so you should get a t oh it's getting very low down your t value you should get 1.07996 or round off to 1.08 which is what we were trying to show over here okay so Ah, one thing that we always say is, Miss, can't we just use, you know, uh, S equals to V times T? Or, or rather, distance is velocity. Distance is velocity times time. Can't we use this? Oh, it's the same thing. It's like our stuva here. Because there is no acceleration, you can also write this as distance equals to U times time. Or, since initial and final speed is the same, we just do V times T. So, this is the... The version that we may have seen before we do A-levels, okay? So, these are the same things, except that there's no acceleration here, plus zero. Okay, two marks. One comes from your equation, okay? Either version of this, d equals vt or the whole stuva equation, it's fine. And, of course, you sub in your values to get the final answer. That's A for accuracy. All right, next, calculate the height of the center of the target above the ground. So you are, okay, let's go back to the picture a bit. We are going to somehow hit the center of the target right here. Bullseye. Nice red bullseye. So, hmm, that's a little below our initial, it might be a bit be below the initial height because here is the height, but then it goes a little below though. Let me see if I can draw it. Okay, we go like that. Pew, oi, wrong color, sorry. <laughs> it is pew, drop down. Mm. 
So I would recommend we start off by writing the stuva if you're not sure how to start. Stuva is the way to go. Just list out what information you have in the vertical component. Let's go! S-T-U-V-A. Stuva. Okay, vertical displacement. I think we will try to find that. Time we know is the same from before. See our 1.08 here? That's the time it takes this arrow to travel this pink color path and hit the target. Whether in the horizontal or the vertical is the same time. Same arrow. So let's write down 1.08 seconds. Initial speed. We go back to the triangle we draw here on the left side. But instead we're trying to find the vertical component now. So we're going to do instead of cosine, we do sine. So let's write it down. 65 sine 4.3. Final speed? Don't know. Doesn't matter. Acceleration. Oh. What is pulling the projectile downwards? Hmm. We're on planet Earth. Probably have gravity. Which is always pointing downwards at gravity due to acceleration 9.81. So. Write it down, 9.81. But before we happily plug in the values, there's one trap we need to be careful of. This one, uh, the object goes up and goes down. So you must define your direction. Where is positive, where is negative? So I think I should write a reminder here. Define, I'm going to choose for this system, anything that goes up is positive. Any vector that goes down is negative. So acceleration 9.81 is negative. Initial velocity is going to be positive. So here's a trap to be careful of. Highlight that if you try the question and you're like, oh, I don't know why the answer is wrong. Okay, positive, negative. Go back to the picture. See this arrow? It's going up. Here, 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 here. UY. Pointing upwards in the beginning. So we give it a positive. At the end, uh, acceleration is downwards, 9.1. So we're going to give this a negative. So we get correct values. Okay, now let's plug in. So I think we have, hmm, what equation should we use? Uh? S equals, what do we have? S, T, U, and A. I think it's back to our old stool bar. S equals to U, T plus half A, T squared. So good job if you thought about this one. But to remind ourselves, we only use all the vertical components. So I write all these mini, mini Y's over there. Okay, we want to find the displacement, huh? So let's go. 6.5, eh, sorry, 65 sine 4.3 time 1.08 plus half negative 9.81 t square. Please remember the square. I forgot. Then I press calculator, I got wrong answer. <laughs> okay. So you should get a negative value. Don't panic, stay calm first. It's okay if you get a negative value. 0 0.45768, blah, 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 blah. So is the answer negative 0 0.46? No, not yet. Not yet. Don't so happy yet. 0 0.46 meter is the displacement from the original height. What do they want? They want the height above the ground. So plot twist. Let's go back to the picture. So displacement, <clears throat> uh, initial displacement here I can assume is S of Y is 0, where the arrow starts. So it means all along this dotted line, S of Y is 0. Which means if I have a negative value, negative 0 0.46, the object has gone below my initial starting point. So negative 0 0.46 meters. This is the displacement um, here. So this is SY, negative 0 0.46. Ah, here's the trap. And they want you to find the height above ground, which is this H. So we know this whole height is 1.66. We know that the arrow falls below by 0 0.46. So we can just minus 1.66 minus 0 0.46 to get the height. Tricky, tricky Cambridge. Why you do this? Okay. Let's go. So to find the height, 
above ground, we're going to take 1.66 minus 0 0.46. Okay, so this will give us... I kind of round it off to have the same significant figures. Uh, sorry, same decimal place. 1, 2, 1, 2. Easier to minus. So this will give me 1.20 meters. So the answer is not 0 0.46, it is 1.2. Okay, so final answer is one mark. Uh, one mark is from your Stuva equation. One mark is if you get, you know, sub all the values into Stuva, you get a value here. Uh, that's the in, in between. But that's not the final answer. Last part C, by considering energy changes, state and explain how the final kinetic energy of the arrow as it hits the target compares with the initial kinetic energy immediately after release. Numerical calculation is not required. Ah, basically you say don't calculate, just explain. So, okay, let's draw the path. Let's say I start here. It's my reference point. I launch the arrow, goes up, goes down a little bit below. So just now we learn, uh, we calculate that this one goes below 0 0.46 meters. Negative just means below the initial position of zero. Displacement, zero. So, kinetic energy. Hmm. Let's say I start here with a kinetic energy of, let's say, 2 joules. When I reach this same exact height, it should be a kinetic energy of also 2 joules. But then I go below the initial position. So this kinetic energy should be more than 2 joules. Okay, so in this case, hmm, I think we can call this our start and end point down at the bottom. And overall, because of the decrease in height, there is a decrease in gravitational potential energy. Where did the energy go? To kinetic energy? Oh? So in this whole process, I'll write that down, GPE is converted into kinetic energy. So there should be more kinetic energy because you start here, but you go lower than that. So how do we explain in English for two marks? We can say, well... What do we need to do? Uh? State. Explain. State, you say what? What's the answer? Explain what? Uh, how the final compare with initial? Uh, bigger, smaller, larger? We say it's more. So we can say, kinetic energy has increased. Okay, this is the final one. But we need to explain. Now this explain, when you see the word explain, they're asking you why. Why you say increase? Uh, so we have to say, hmm, because, because, oh, because we go below the GPE. You must talk about GPE. So because the GPE has decreased. So KE increase. GPE becomes KE. Okay. So this one you say GPE has decreased. This one is a M1 mark, M for method. And there is a A1 mark when you say increased. This is A1. So the tricky thing about M1, A1 pairs is you must get the M1, only you can get the A1 mark. So if I just simply say, uh, increase, without explanation, I may not be able to get this A1 mark. Sad. Okay. Alright, so that's the end of this projectile question.